now rocking with the best. Malik Davis, your financial credit guru, the hit maker, the score. Malik D, your financial credit guru, the hit maker, the score. Fox O's number one financial literacy podcast. My co-host, Mr. Dan Green, tax accountant slash economist, and one of my very, very, very special guests. My entertainment lawyer, Ms. Samara S. Harris, with Music, Law, and Film. How you doing, Ms. Harris? Doing great, doing great. Happy to be here. <laughs> About time you're on the set. About time. <laughs> I made it to the promised land. <laughs> well, this podcast here, of course, as you already know, is geared towards the black and brown community. Mm -hmm. And it is based around financial literacy. So when we're talking about and wanting to have discussions with you about entertainment law and individuals that's actually trying to get into the entertainment law space, mm -hmm. they need to be properly educated on the financial literacy font mm -hmm. so they can be properly aligned as they move forward with their careers in this industry. First of all, how did you get started with this entertainment business as far as being an entertainment lawyer? It's a long story, but the abridged version is that I started, I'm from North Carolina, as mm. you know, Carolina, we're all Carolina folks, but you know, we don't really have a big entertainment base in Carolina yet. It's getting bigger and yeah. better every year, you know, with Charlotte and mm -hmm. different shows being taped there. But for the most part, I just am a Carolina girl who knew that from the very beginning when I was in high school, I wanted to go to law school mm -hmm. and I knew that I wanted to be in entertainment. Now, I did not know one single person that was an entertainment lawyer. Wow. Now it's people know them all the time, but mm -hmm. I didn't know one person, I didn't even know one person that knew an entertainment lawyer. So, you know, it was a hard grind to kind of get here, but mm -hmm. you know, I went to Spelman College, undergrad mm -hmm. here in Atlanta. Delta, I, right? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> to Kappa Chapter. <laughs> to Sigma Theta Sorority yeah. Incorporated. <laughs> Spelman College. Mm -hmm. So is that a HBCU? What? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I know that. This is the premier, not just, let me just say something about Spelman. Spelman is the premier, premier college. If you want to go to a school that is a number one liberal arts college in the country, you go to Spelman. Wow. Not mm. black, number one black, number one overall mm. liberal arts college. Hence why we have so many, you know, people coming to, you know, to the table with millions and billionaires offering to give Spelman money because we have some amazing programs over there at Spelman. But I was an English major, pre-law, um, writing minor. I was all about writing and English. And they said, you know, listen, if you want to be a good attorney, you know, major in English so that you know how to write, how yeah. to communicate. It's a lot of technical writing. So I actually, you know, really love that part. I loved law school. I ended up getting a full scholarship to law school. Wow. Mm. North Carolina Central okay. University School of my Law. My daughter went to North Carolina Central. Eagle Pride. Yep. Okay. So we got to <laughs> shout out all the things yep. today. Mm -hmm. um, well, actually, both of my daughters. Oh, that's North Carolina Central, psychology and sociology. I love it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Keep it in the state. Keep it in the state. <laughs> So, you know, my mom and my grandmother will often say, are you going to ever come back here and work? And it's like, as soon as North Carolina gets an established entertainment community, I would mm -hmm. come back. Mm -hmm. But Atlanta was just an amazing base for us. You know, okay. it kind of, the entertainment came to us. If you remember, mm -hmm. you oh, know, yes. I graduated in like 1996 mm -hmm. from uh, high school and I went to college and graduated uh, in 2000 from Spelman. Well, at that time, it was tons of shows coming out of Atlanta. Not just unscripted like it is now. It's a ton of unscripted, but a lot Lots of scripted shows and unscripted shows, just all over the place. Entertainment was popping up in Atlanta in a way. You know, Tyler Black Perry, Hollywood. Black Hollywood. Yeah. Tyler Perry had mm -hmm. shown up. You know, I had a lot of clients that were on Tyler Perry shows and did negotiations for them as well on the scripted side. So that's how I kind of got started. One of my first... Um, larger reality clients that people, I mean, I shouldn't say that true, but um, some of the ones that are really well known are like the Braxtons, you know, I represent, mm. did a lot of the talent agreement for the Braxtons here, all of the Atlanta-based Braxtons that were here, I was representing them some all. Some of our mutual clients. Some of our mutual clients. Mm. Um, I have Basketball Wives, I had uh, wow. Little Women Atlanta, lots of the big shows growing up, hip-hop, hip-hop, um, mm. Atlanta, I mean. The I've even seen that. That's Deb and 
you may have seen I've him. even seen That's Deb Antony. Growing up hip hop. Um, um, hip hop Atlanta. Deb Antony, right? Deb Antony is growing up hip hop. Growing yes. up hip hop Atlanta. Waka and Tammy. Got you. Um, lots of different shows, you know, are just come out of Atlanta, and it's it's been amazing for mm -hmm. people from here to to just be able to spread the culture, you know, around the world in a way that people who have never met this progressive black culture in Atlanta, they're able to come here and not have to come here and just be able to tune in on television. And I think it's inspirational for a lot of people. It's drawn a lot of other people to Atlanta. Mm. So from the contractual piece, mm -hmm. the paperwork, I want to dive a little bit more deep into the entertainment law aspect from that point of view in regards to the the paperwork and negotiations mm -hmm. contract because I'm a client of yours and I've been dealing with you for a very, 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 very long and time. And you are a particular. <laughs> <laughs> no one would say that about you. <laughs> you are very particular type of client. You are very serious about what oh, you want. Very not, that they, not that really they all aren't. Everyone is very serious about the details that they give their attorney. Mm -hmm. We make we can make no mistakes. They don't understand. No one understands when we even, everybody else can make a mistake. Your attorney, what? You know, it's like you cannot make a mistake. So it's a very detailed feel because, you know, the devil is in the details. Oh, yeah. Or the lack thereof. As yeah. I tell my clients, you know, I used to have clients that would call me and say, oh, Mara, I got it. I did this agreement by myself. I, it was it was fine. I read through it. I went ahead and signed it without you. Mm -hmm. And then I tell them after they sent it to me, well, it was only two pages. Mm -hmm. Yes, because there was absolutely nothing in there for you. That was wow. supposed to be in the contract. Yeah. So that's why it was two pages. You know? And you always tell me that, too. You said, Malik, these contracts are very, very tricky. Mm -hmm. So you got to actually make sure that you read over it and make and make sure that I read over it and look over it. Because there's certain things in there that we're looking for to protect you as my client. So let's talk about these different type of contracts when you're talking about uh, um, negotiating contracts, mm -hmm. when you're talking about shoppers agreements, when you're talking about partnership agreement contracts and what that looks like. Okay. So some of the most important things that you want to make sure that you concentrate on, as we have done many times, yes, is have. whether or not it's going to be an exclusive agreement. So okay. let's say if you're shopping a project, um, you know, some people don't understand that, listen, if, once you sign up to allow this person to shop the project, you're pretty much frozen in time on that project until, that, mm -hmm. until the term ends. Mm -hmm. And if the term is something short, three months, six months, nine months, you know, it, it's not that big of a deal. But if it's, if let's say you're dealing with something that is very time sensitive in terms of what's going on in the culture and in what's going on, like if it was Black Lives Matter and you're really doing something that really is particular to the movement that's happening in that moment, yeah. you don't want to lock yourself down to somebody that actually wasn't able to sell your show longer than the time frame that you really have to sell that show mm -hmm. because it won't be as relevant a year or two from now. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, when you have a show that's very relevant culturally, you know, um, to what's going on. And it's very, the industry is very much like that. You also want to be um, particular in terms of your back end and what types of deals that you're doing. Are you selling the show in its entirety to this person? Is it um, a license deal? Mm -hmm. Where license deals are more, you know, the type of deals where you are just giving them the rights to the deal, to use that deal, but they come back to you at the end of the term. To the re renegotiate. You, if you would like, or never again. Let's say, I mean, it may be, you know, Netflix yeah. a lot of times does a lot of licenses so that mm -hmm. if you're going to have a Netflix deal, it's a license deal for that particular amount of time, and then the property will revert back to you. Got you. You know, some of these other ones, if you get some producers that are local, that are more grinders, and they're going to, let's say, do a lot more work on your project, they may want some back-end stake in your project to say, look, we're going to need some of that back-end contingent compensation, which is royalty, syndication, any of the money that's made on merchandise and that kind of stuff. So um, it's, it's it, and it's different when it comes to scripted versus unscripted. It just depends on which, what type of project that you're shopping. But, you know, you really want to just be particular about whether or not you're giving someone exclusive rights, non-exclusive rights, whether you are permanently turning over rights to them even once they land a deal, mm -hmm. you know, or will I get these back at some point? Um, if once the show's over, what happens? What if I'd like to make a play? 
you know. I started out doing just a reality television with a uh, show with you called, or a movie for or a man. movie yeah. you know called um all that glitters is not gold. Exactly. Well, now I want to do a theater production of all that glitter. All like all that glitters is not gold. Do I own those rights still? Do I not? And all of that's very important. It's not important. Let's take a quick commercial break so we can pay these bills, and we're gonna jump back into this conversation. Let's do it. <laughs> Malik D, welcome back to the School of Financial Literacy Podcast, Fox O, Mr. Mara S. Harris. Let's lead off on what we just touched into with the commercial break. Absolutely. So, you know, I was really just kind of going into the important, uh, the things you want to make sure that you pay particular attention to when you're doing these agreements and back-end compensation and uh, contingent compensation, mm -hmm. ancillaries, all of these things are things that necessarily aren't directly, it, it may not be related to the actual show that you're doing, but it's going to be a spinoff of the show, whether it's, a, like I said, theatrical rights or whether it's merchandise. You, one of yeah. your shows, you know, yeah. you already know all these, you know, reality shows and people have these taglines, yeah. you know, that come out. You know, I had the Braxons and, you know, a lot of people would say, oh, won't he do it? Mm. Or, you know. There's taglines. That these are taglines that people have. And they, have to be, and they have to be trademarked. They, if you would like to maintain those rights, you should go ahead and trademark them. You always tell me about that. That's <laughs> right. And the more things that you trademark prior to our negotiation to sell the show, the easier it is to explain to them that any rights that they get are going to be mutual. Mm -hmm. We're not just handing you over this trademark, you know, to this thing. We already know that this is going to be popular. Mm -hmm. We already know that, um, what is the one that Phaedra used to say? I think she trademarked, a fix-it Jesus. Mm -hmm. Fix-it Jesus, you know. All of these things, if, as much as they might just sound like no big deal, it, you know, once you put it on clothing and attaching it to yeah. merchandise and items for sale, you know, it really does make a difference whether or not you own those trademarks or you have to pay someone else for the rights to use it on your T-shirts. Mm -hmm. And you made it up. I mean, just think about it. You know, people will go and register things that are popular. I know people who that is their entire you know, kind of hack that they go, they hear things and they go and register them. They hear websites, mm -hmm. they find out popular things and they go and register those websites and they'll sell somebody back their own tagline attached to a website mm -hmm. for $50,000. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, they bought it first and they own the rights for it 10 years. It becomes like a cottage industry, huh, mm -hmm. to do that. <laughs> it's a whole industry. I mean, people mm -hmm. have figured out ways to make money off of pretty much every aspect, as you know, of entertainment. So exactly. you just want to make sure when you are selling your material and you're doing whatever it is you're doing, you understand all of the different streams of income. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that it's are, a lot. It's a it's lot of moving a parts lot with of, it. Same thing in the music business. Lots of different, there's publishing, there's your mechanical royalties, there's all types of performance rights royalties. Mm -hmm. they, you know, all of these royalties are different streams of income, and if you don't understand them, you can't track it. I guess a lot of, a lot of the older Motown, Motown acts got screwed. They did. Uh, from the 60s. That's right. Because they didn't understand the mechanics. That's right. And the, the big studios and record companies basically took them for a ride. That's from what right. I read. And I mechanicals understand. were huge back then. Yeah. Like mechanical rights, as I tell people, the easiest way to remember mechanical rights when it comes to music is anything it's once the music is put in a tangible form is the language tangible meaning you can reach out and touch it mm -hmm. it's been put into a cd as long as it's in your head it doesn't count. Mm -hmm. It's once it's put pen to paper, physically in a CD, even on a drive, however that you, tangible form that you put it in, yeah. once it's put into that tangible form, then the mechanical royalty is any royalty that follows the sale of that item that you put it in. So you sold CDs, you sold tapes, you sold vinyls, you know, back in the day. Mm -hmm. Regarding your practice, mm -hmm. what are the, 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 I know you're an entertainment attorney, but what is like the range of clients you have? I mean, is it just focused like on the music industry or the film industry or you do all of them? Are you, are you all encompassing? I am all encompassing. I don't okay. have the luxury of just picking one Special. segment. Yes. I mean, um, to be honest, it's any contract. I tell people all the time the easiest way to remember it, any contract that could possibly be related to a person in the music industry, I probably have done it. Wow. Do you ever dabble whether with any athletes? Whether it's modeling, whether it's branding, whether mm -hmm. it's sponsorships, mm -hmm. whether it's, you know, record labels. I have 
of mm-hmm. a major label that I've represented for a long time, a really big, well, it's an independent label, but it's a big independent label. Mm-hmm. And they bring in a ton of money. So we have a lot of clients that are signed to them. We have a ton of agreements that are going in and out, standard provisions to have to make sure in every single deal because every client is different, you know, and some of my clients are very strict about what they're willing to do and what they're not willing to do. And that's why it's so important to have these contracts and these negotiate, negotiation pieces with an entertainment lawyer such as yourself to make sure that their paperwork is right since they're so particular about what they're going to take and what, they, and what they're not going to take sure. to make sure it's properly putting that paperwork the right way. And you know what? Let me say one more thing, too, about carve-outs. Carve-outs is another really important thing for clients. Clients. You want to try to carve out anything that you definitely don't want to share with them because mm. sometimes you forget you are, you know, I had a lot of doctors, so um, tons of doctors, you know, um, on different doctor shows here mm-hmm. in Atlanta. Atlanta Plastic was a big one. You know, they want to make sure I'm promoting a plastic surgery, some device that works in plastic surgery. Mm-hmm. I'm not sharing with the network. A lot of times the networks will have In their terms of the profitability? Profitability. Mm-hmm. Profitability. So they, mm-hmm. what they will do is if you're on their show promoting it, they want a piece. So mm-hmm. you, if you know you don't want to share and you're already making enough you money, have to have a carve out. You have to have a carve out to carve say, out. listen, under no circumstances are you, you can film at my practice, but I have signs up for my skin products and all of these things that you're going to see and we're not willing to share. Mm-hmm. And what the networks will say is, okay, well, Either they'll say that's fine and they're not interested, or and some of them will say, well, we are interested, and if you're not interested in sharing, we won't show those. So they'll blur it, or we need to remove yeah. the signage, you know, to make sure that if you don't want us to promote it, then we're not going to promote it. Or they'll have a, a very standard provision is if it's recognizable, if your logo is recognizable in three or more episodes— we want our cut. Oh, really? So we'll agree on that, too. Mm-hmm. Recognizable, because sometimes, that, that was another stickler, before it would say if it's in it. So you may see, let's say, your score logo, mm-hmm. and it's in a scene on The Housewives, but it's way, way, way back in the corner. Mm-hmm. You know, it doesn't matter if they say if it's recognizable that we can see your crown and the average reasonable person can say, hey, that's uh, Malik Davis from the score. That's his logo. Oh, he must have something to do with this. Wow. They're going to want they're going to count that as one. It's just like, I guess, even like, if nobody talked about it if on you, scene, if you're shooting a movie mm-hmm. and there's a Coca-Cola sign in the back, That's you right. better believe Coke paid for that. That's right. It, no matter, even if it's blurry, it's just, if yeah. you can see a Coca-Cola truck it's passing, remotely recognizable, it was intentional. If a truck is passing by a Pepsi truck or a beer truck, I mean, like a slits. That's whatever. right. Or the Budweiser. Passing by, yeah, it, whatever. Mm-hmm. They are paying for that exposure. That is exactly mm, right. They're okay. paying for I it. They're that. given a percentage mm-hmm. or there has been a deal brokered prior to that being advertised. Or when you see, everybody's always having Mac laptops and then you'll see the Apple mm-hmm. covered the up. The logo. Sometimes yeah. you won't yeah. see the Apple covered yeah. up. You'll see it and you know that they got their check. Right. You know, so. That's why I like in some of these episodic uh, shows they will either have some nondescript mm-hmm. product like for instead of an Apple computer, it's some whatever right. made up company on there with a with a logo or whatever the decal or whatever mm-hmm. over the actual company's product. That's right. A name or whatever. That's right. That's yeah. right. Oh, uh, it's blurred out, like you said. And well, I mean, even huh. with some of the, I have some clients that are like like Rashida and Kirk on um, uh, Love and Hip Hop Atlanta. Mm-hmm. You know, they want their their if they spend tons of money a lot of times on these clothes. They don't like it that their stuff is getting blurred out, and right. they've kind of but eased because- up some of the eased up some of the blurring because my clients get mad. They're talent. They spend a ton of money. Exactly. Don't blur out my G for Gucci. Exactly. Don't so if you blur have- out my Chanel. Right. So if you're on that platform with those individuals having those type of products like that, they should be able to put it out there like that to promote it. If they want to, if they want to put it out, then they should. And a lot of times on like you you may look at a Bravo show like mm-hmm. a Housewives of Beverly Hills. They're not blurring their stuff. Mm. Why are you blurring it on love and hip hop? Mm. So, you know, there's also be the to dis- me a racial the- element to lots of things that I was are happening. Ask you, what was the reason ask. behind it? Why would you? But technically, the reason is that oh, we didn't. They didn't pay for branding, and we have to get permission to do that. You know, if we're gonna. 
Well, did you get permission from Balenciaga when Erica Jane on the Housewives of Bev Beverly Hills had Balenciaga, get Balenciaga literally all mm. over her entire shirt, sweatshirt, you know, it's 40 times and it's in bright yellow, neon yellow, did you get, you know? So I just want to make sure for my clients a lot of times because we're doing reality shows yeah. that are based in the black community, I want to make sure my talent is treated the same. I don't care who it is that you know you feel like is more important or whether they make more money or whatever the case, you know, you're going to treat my clients equally mm. or you, they're not coming back. Exactly. Let's take a quick commercial break so we can pay these bills. We're going to jump back into this conversation because you got my interest on something. Malik D, welcome back to the School of Financial Literacy Podcast with Fox Soul. Miss Harris, let's pick up from that conversation that you was discussing about Balenciaga. Absolutely. So, you know, I'm just making a point that when it comes to branding, branding is super important on reality shows. So remember, you're not going to, unless you're on one of these multi, these really, really, really popular reality shows, like maybe on Bravo, you're probably not going to be in the eight figure bracket mm -hmm. per year. Just remember that. So the whole, Why? the it, well, because of the viewership. Advertising. Bravo, advertising. Advertisers are willing to pay more. Bravo reality shows that have from the housewives to the other ones, they're just making a lot. They come at a higher price point. Now, you can make more money on some of these other shows on major networks, ABC, NBC. But think about it. They're different the way that they do those shows. They don't really do the messy reality shows. Mm -hmm. They're more like The Bachelor mm -hmm. or, you know, The Bachelorette or these kind of shows that are uh, Survivor, mm -hmm. game show um, types. Still don't understand. I still don't understand Survivor, but go ahead. <laughs> I love Survivor. The appeal, but go ahead. <laughs> yes, yes. I know. It does seem very, very scary. Um, but, you know, you want to try to spread. I tell all my my clients, listen, you have five minutes. You may think you have, oh, well, I'm. this is my season one. The five minutes that you have, I don't care. And by five minutes, I mean five years or 10 years. It's still five minutes in entertainment. Mm -hmm. No one will remember you based on these, you know, small scenes that you're creating on a reality show. They're going to remember you. Remember to springboard everything that's important to you in your life off of these shows. Wow. You're I guess using the viewers to, to make your dreams come true. Yeah. If it's related to the show or unrelated. You know, I have clients that have nothing to do with hair, makeup, nails, and they get deals for gel nail polish or, mm. you know, from random people across the country that have products that are very good and you don't even have to create your own. A lot of my clients are attaching their names and agreeing to promote certain uh, products on the show that's someone else's product. Would you say the Cardassian, Kim, the Cardassian's, I wouldn't say a playbook, but M.O., it's Modus operandi was the is the template she that they, was a that deal they used. Genius. She was a deal genius. The mother, right? The, the mother. Mo yes, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Chris, you know, because mm -hmm. they're at the point now where, when you think about it, you're not going to see them really promoting smaller products from someone else. Like we couldn't call Kim and say, oh, "I have the best new cream. I need you to promote it and pay her." I mean, you can if you try, but unless your budget is in the multi-millions as a startup, wow. you can't afford Kim. The mm -hmm. only thing that Kim <laughs> is going to get on and do is something that is her product mm -hmm. or she owns almost 100% of because mm -hmm. she's pretty much going to be the reason why you make all of your yeah. money. Yeah. You know, so at, once you get to a certain point, you're not going to do those things. But when you're smaller, you use other people's things to promote. You may say, hey, I, I know of... I, had this amazing waist trainer. You know, all the girls want to be small, and this waist trainer that I wrap around my waist is so amazing. I want to promote my own version of it mm. on my website. You can promote it on the show. You can promote it on your personal website and make lots of money. Do you deal with these influencers too? You know, yes. these people on these. Um, That's a great question. Yeah, I, because you've got the influencers now that are on these they like Instagram, money. yeah, well, Instagram the, and all these other and negotiate TikTok. TikTok. And remember the millennials. That is their yeah. That's, that was their number one job. Yeah, pick. yeah. I think uh, they just yeah. did some kind of survey, and the number one thing that they want to be is influencers. Yeah, because yeah. they can sit at home, they can do yeah. YouTube's in their shorts, in your shorts, <laughs> do all the same crap talking that you do all day yeah. long and get paid and for. make a fortune and. Make 
some of these young kids, teenagers, but, that are millionaires. But it's all based upon how she as influencers. Goes, but it's all based upon on how this an entertainment lawyer here negotiates right. the contract. Right. That's right. Do you deal with influencers too? Absolutely, okay. absolutely, and yeah. they're getting paid based on the viewers. Right. You know, and, and even on things like TikTok, people say, "Oh my God, well, I have this viral video on TikTok, and I haven't made any money." Well, do you know how you make money on TikTok? How TikTok quantifies money. And that's where you would come in. Right. If you don't understand the way that they do it, you know, they're not looking at how many times the video played. So we're looking at that. But TikTok is going to pay you based on how many different user platforms your video showed up on. Uh, different, uh, different, whole different number. You're the accountant guy. Yeah. That's a whole different number. Because so. if you see TikTok on Instagram or on Facebook, it's... That's right. Different. How, and there, how many different streaming, even within TikTok? Mm, so we're uh. saying, okay, you got a million views, but how many of those viewers played it on their particular user platforms? Or did they just come to your page? You don't get paid as much when everyone's coming to your post. Mm. What you get paid for is all the shares. Wow. So it's all based on analytics, marketing analytics, and it's very important. VH1, you know, they'll pay my clients to do different promotions for them, and they'll say, listen, we want to make sure your client understands that they cannot do any sponsorship for any major brands, you know, because that are in conflict with us. Well, I need you to break that thing down. Mm-hmm. You're not just going to block off every major brand in the world because we signed up for a reality show. So, And I had a really big client to go get Procter & Gamble. Really? Mm. And the network was pissed. Pissed. Because they would have wanted the Procter & Gamble deal, but they were able, they had enough skin in the game as yeah. the talent to go negotiate their own. So they made a whole rule and provision based on my talent being able to do that like really? y'all aren't doing that anymore yeah because basically you know you went out and got the six figures that would have gone to the network and the network would have been giving you five or ten grand for the promotion instead you got a quarter million and the network is getting nothing mm. so they're very particular when that happens that mm. can really i mean that upset a lot of the executives and um because it kind of ate into what they consider to be you know their main bag even when it comes to social media i've had a lot of fights so the main reason why you're an entertainment lawyer when you're dealing with clients with these contracts as far as negotiations and agreements is to make sure that they don't get robbed they don't get robbed and to make sure like i tell my clients let's ask for every single thing you want up front mm -hmm. even if you think you might but you're not really sure let's ask for it anyway let's carve out every single thing well I don't have a book I want to make a book okay well let's put the book down today mm. and carve it out right now even if we don't, and because this is the thing if the whole point of my negotiation is that I'm carving these things out they, there's only so much I'm willing to turn over to them. So they'll say, well, wait a minute, Omar, you know, has this product been um, put into production yet? Mm. Has You know, they're trying to figure out how far down the line my client is. Mm. And if they're just, I'm like, it doesn't matter where my, I'm not willing to share anything with you about their deal because I'm carving it out. Mm -hmm. And then they have to carve it out. And then we maybe go down and create the product that we said we were already creating. And we make sure that we can, carve it out in advance so, so the financial included so the financial literacy piece to this whole thing when you negotiating these contracts for your clients is to make sure that for individuals that want to get into this space or are already into this space is trying to get these bigger deals is to get them the most bang for their buck the most bang for your buck and you realize i want each client to understand what they have that's a commodity what are you selling that people are really putting you on television for? You know, think about it. All of the things that you can promote, all of the things that you could be, you know, springboarding your entire career off of. You know, it may be something that they want to do in the future. Let's say they want to model, but they're not a model now, but they're interested in modeling. You know, all of the, all of those things, putting it out on the show, going to do di to different, you know, castings if you want to be an actress. Then everyone who's watching reality TV that's in casting gets to see how you audition. It's like a 11 million, you know, person audition. Everybody saw you. Everybody to watching Housewives on Tuesday at 9 o'clock saw your audition. And if they're in on the television side and you want something scripted, they now know that 
exactly what your interview looks like. But tell me something. What these partnership agreements, mm -hmm. these uh, uh, um, these shoppers agreements? Can you break that down for my for our v viewers and listeners that's looking to get into this entertainment space, which, which they definitely going to need an entertainment lawyer? What a partnership agreement versus an uh, um, a shoppers agreement mean? Okay, so when you normally just do a basic shopper's agreement, essentially you can just pay someone to who has a connection and they can go just take your project in, but they may not have very little to do with it after. They can mm -hmm. or they cannot. Sometimes they do, sometimes people wanna shop and produce. Like you have a situation like that where you have someone that's more major that's going to be involved and they'll be on the production side as well. I also have people like me who I may have a connection because I just know people, you know, at Netflix and at all these different places that say, look, am I going to take time out to go shop your project as if that is what I do? No. I am a whole entertainment lawyer. I don't have the time, and I tell my clients that. Mm -hmm. So what I will do is if I have a plug that is interested or has told me about something or I can shop it to them, I will. And then you would pay me a shopper's fee. Let's take a quick commercial break so we can pay these bills. Well, I definitely want to get back onto this topic right here. To the School of Financial Literacy Podcast, Fox O, Miss Harris. Yes. We was talking about the partnership agreements and the shoppers agreements. Let's expound a little bit more on that. Okay. So, you know, a lot of times clients will go out and get partners. Partners are more seasoned people in the business that really have the production connections a lot of times. They have the reach to get your project where it needs to go. So you're willing to partner with them. You're willing to say, listen, I had this idea. I have my whole thing pretty much written out, broken down how I want it, but I need somebody reputable who already has skin in the game accredited accredited to to put your name to literally be able to put your project forward and push it to get it some clout because when you think about it it's so many people that are always shopping things you never know hmm. well if you want to shop projects you know, you also want to make sure you secure your project, like we've discussed. Many a times. What can happen when you don't? And I have had a situation. Yes, he has. <laughs> where a certain series, documentary, was... Hell, we could just go ahead and just say what the documentary series <laughs> no, was. No, <laughs> okay, well, we cannot. All right, all right, okay, we'll leave it alone. We may have a, confidenti <laughs> a confidentiality clause on that. I think we do have it. Yes, <laughs> we do. <laughs> but you know how I am as your client, Amari. Yes, I when, do. So when, I'm like, absolutely you, no. Listen, once you step out there and you think that you get ready to take something from me... You, you it better, can go it, left. It can go Very left. quickly. Very quickly can go left. But you have great people that know yeah. what to do, who Absolutely. to contact, and how to make the right moves to make sure that that doesn't happen. And, you know, you wanted, you did what you needed to do. You secured your project. You registered it with the WGA. You have sure a time stamp on it. You know, you trademark your titles. Right. You make sure that you do all the things that shows you were first in time to this idea, you know? And that's the thing that turns out to be most important when it comes to shopping things, because you want to make sure that no one else who just kind of fly by night, read your project, saw it in an email. Because, got they, because they are stealing out here. They will take they are it. They're stealing your intellectual property out of here. Yes, and then you got to go through proving access because, I mean, you don't have to prove direct access, but you're going to have to prove how it is if you're going for them in trademark lawsuits and copyright lawsuits. I've had some of those before. And you have to say, okay, well, when did I have access to your project? You know? So all of these things matter when it comes to how many people were forwarded your project, how many people were copied on the email. Are these people necessary? Did we just send it to production? Did we send it to every single side assistant mm -hmm. PA on the project? What exactly, you know, who did we shop it to? And how important was it? Because you really want to stay within the realm of whatever process the production companies have. They also will have a formal document sometimes. That's a new thing where they make you sign a document that says, listen, you understand by the nature of this business, I may have a project call the score right now I in my that. back pocket. I've never read it. I haven't read every single project people have submitted to me. It may be a project right but now. But that gives them an avenue to try to justify and steal in your content I mean, or your intellectual property. Correct. I mean, it, so how do you protect yourself with that? Well, you kind of have to make a decision. Listen, do I 
do I have my stuff secure enough where I'm not really worried about it? Or you take it, if you really don't trust them, we won't send it to them. Mm. Because that's your, your biggest, you know, you really just want to make sure that the people that are involved are legitimate producers. Mm. And a lot of times, you know, if it's coming, that's why they, they say they will not take unsolicited projects unless it comes from agents or entertainment lawyers. Because Joe Schmo sends it sends you a project, you didn't even read it, they found your email on a website or heard it on a panel five years ago. Mm -hmm. They never even looked at your, because it came from someone who's not even in television. Mm -hmm. And then they'll come back and say, no, 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 and this has happened time and time again, where people feel like you somehow read their idea and took it. But we, you know, even in copyright law, there's so many cases where, you know, the judges say, listen, there have been multiple cases where on separate corners of the world, people have created similar ideas. Mm -hmm. Technically, they both, if they never heard of the other one, they, are both, they both have valid copyright claims. They both have valid trademark claims. If you're in, I mean, think about it. It could be one person that's over in Malaysia that's doing something on the score mm -hmm. and uh, credit scores, and they've never heard of uh, the score. Mm -hmm. So you, you really have to do your due diligence when this is when it comes to, you know, it becomes very important to get an intellectual property attorney, mm -hmm. which is not what I do. Be clear, I am transactional. So trans what's transactional? Transactional attorneys pretty much solely negotiate contracts and settlements. So I am the person that you come to prior to ever going to court and needing any kind of person to basically, if you're suing anyone in entertainment, if you're suing people and you're doing any type of really contentious negotiations that are probably going to be litigious and end up in court, mm -hmm. you're going to need a litigator. Mm -hmm. I, my job is to often in disputes come in, as I did with you, and negotiate a settlement so that we don't have to litigate. And I was prepared to go all the way through litigations as well, you too, were. with them individuals trying to take my intellectual property. Absolutely, because you were convinced that it happened. It, he, it did happen. Exactly. So when people are serious about their things being taken and they know they've done everything to secure them. Oh, I was willing them, to go all the way to the wire wedding. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's All the way to the wire. And, and you know, and I remember during that certain situation, we were really trying to figure out where they got the access from. And you yeah. were able to kind of pinpoint where you thought they were able to get the access from, which didn't turn out to matter to my for my job because my only point was, I don't care how you got it. It's obvious that you got it. This is his project. It was tweaked in this way or that way. And we're going to need these things in return for you having put it out without his permission. Well, this came through this person and that person. We have this celebrity attached. We don't care about any of that. We do not care about any of that. On the only thing she, that, and she was relentless in making sure when she said she didn't, we don't care anything about that. That it. she stuck to that. I mean, now you know you got to pay like you weigh in order to make sure your stuff is secure because she ain't cheap. <laughs> She's not cheap, but she is a for uh, the the long term cost. Yeah, I am cheap. When you think about the money that I am saving you, yeah. when it comes to, and, and remember, your entertainment attorney, and like I tell people, if you're going to sit down and put hours and hours into a podcast, a record label, a television show, a movie, why are you going to shortcut the one person that's going to make sure you get paid for that thing mm. that you spent a year on, two years? This is not the person to cut, okay? Yeah. You do not cut costs when it comes to making sure that your money is paid and your money. Okay, Dan? Right? That's right. <laughs> you want to make sure there is somebody who you can point to a provision. Oh, I agree. Yeah, in a contract that says, hey, the lawyer negotiated this. We have never seen this royalty. I've looked at these statements up and down. It is not here. Where is it? Mm. You know? So, you know, all of these things very much matter when it comes to negotiating your deals and just making sure you're doing the right thing and making sure that your money follows you all the way to your account. Mm. Because people aren't going to say, hey, Malik, you got three of your four streams of income. There's one left. Did you get it? No one's going to say that. They're going to hope you never remember mm -hmm. wow. that you had ancillary income or contingent compensation on a project or that you never checked in on the syndication in these other countries when it was playing. Not relied on that good graces. That's right. That's right. You cannot. I mean, and even though we all agree to act in good faith, mm -hmm. 
<laughs> yeah, sometimes good faith is not actually good faith, right. you know. Everybody so. always trying to hook and crook you, boy. That's why it's very important for you to have an entertainment lawyer such as Amara S. Harris with music, law, and film on your team when it comes down to these contracts, like you said, negotiations, partnerships. And mm -hmm. what's some other contracts that you actually do? Oh, man. Um, gosh, participation agreements, which are the ones that the talent is going to get. So on some of your deals that you've done, you are on the production side. But you, once we land some of these shows, you yeah. may also end up being talent. So we'll negotiate talent agreements, releases, releases for children, location releases. So if we're taping here, I'm sure you guys had to give them a location release to say, hey, this is the location we're going to be at. These are the terms. We've gotten permission to tape from that location. We're, you're not going to have any issues with us. Mm -hmm. All of these things matter. On the television, on the music side, I'm going to negotiate um, the recording deals, um, any kind of license that we might need. If it's a sync license for a new brand in China that wants to add your song to their new commercial. You know, I had Nappy Roots for a long time. Mm -hmm. And if you look every five minutes, there's a gonna have a good day, good day. I mean, good day is on every, it was. It went from McDonald's to, I mean, I don't know what. I, I remember it's that. on yeah. everything. It's literally, by the that. time it's done with one campaign, there's somebody else trying to book it for another campaign. So it just was a super commercial song for them, hmm. you know? It almost was more popular, you know, in advertising than it has been in the music business. Mm. You know, so you have to think about all of these things um, really make a difference. You know, even the releases, the contract. Let's free. take a quick commercial break so we can pay these bills. We're going to jump back on this. Okay, let's do the it. The school. Welcome back to the School of Financial Literacy Podcast, Fox O, with Miss Amara S. Harris, Music, Law, and Film. Let's continue to navigate and move forward with these contracts and with these partnership agreements and with these different kind of contracts that you deal with, as you was explaining. Okay, so again, I was just kind of going through all the different entertainment agreements that I do at my practice. I yeah. mean, we really, it runs the gamut from the production side to the label side mm -hmm. to recording artists to models. I mean, literally people who are doing branding. They have a company that they want me to negotiate the contract because they're hiring influencers. Mm -hmm. You know, I have some kids that have 10, 11 million followers and we're negotiating deals for them, branding wow. deals for them, where they're putting out YouTubes, and within mm. minutes they have a hundred on the social media platform. Social yeah. media platform. So they're doing huge. They're doing TikTok direct deals, where they're getting six-figure TikTok deals. Wow! To promote their own music, because TikTok knows, hey. 11 million kids are going to be watching this in the demographic that I need. Mm. You know. In that vein, uh, what what's advice would you give to a young entertainer just breaking into the industry from a financial and legal standpoint? What kind of advice would you give them? My biggest advice would be to start out learning the different streams of income. You cannot track your money if you didn't understand that you were ever making that money and why you were making mm -hmm. that money and what that money flowed from, what project, what side of the music or television business that it flowed from. So that would be Big advice. Second, I would definitely say get an amazing accountant like yourself. <laughs> well, Absolutely. <thank> you. <laughs> yeah. To make, you need help. Yeah. yeah exactly. you, you really do because a lot of them are very creative, fun, big personality people. They are not going to sit down and track their money. I track it to a certain extent for my clients, but I have to immediately remind them I am not your accountant. No, I do not know anything about your money flow. What I know is what episodes you're on how much is due, how much you've been paid, and how much is left, and what streams they have not. And, and you're right to that In name. terms of calculating it, though, that would leave that all up to you and it's make sure and it's correct. And you're right. It's amazing. People are good at making money, but in terms of managing their money and knowing what's going on, the inflows and outflows, they don't see the importance in it until they get in trouble, either with the tax the tax man or the bank or money goes missing. I can't tell you. Or whatever. Do not they lose track of funds or whatever. Had so, over the years. Yeah. So they have issues after the fact. Yeah. When they, if they just would keep track of their books. Because that's, that's as important as making the money, knowing where it's going. And 
just knowing basics like setting yeah. up your business exactly entities to make sure you have you know people can't pierce the corporate veil right and sue you personally and come take your house or your cars or all the things that matter to you because you made a bad business decision you know? right and setting your business up in a tax advantage manner absolutely advantageous manner i should say that's right to right. make sure you're getting the best tax bracket i exactly. mean i have tons of clients who are paid as individuals i'm like how did you not yeah how are you getting two million dollars <laughs> a year and you're paid individually instead of paying it to your company where you what about all your expenses? Well, I'm not tracking my expenses. So if they set themselves up at an LLC and they don't realize the double taxation of that, meaning the self employment tax, they don't realize that oh. until they start filing their taxes and when they're making money. That's right. And then they realize they gotta pay this point one this fifteen and point three percent additional tax on top of the income tax. That's right. What's that? They have, a lot of them have no clue what, a set, what self-employment tax is. And pass through. Yeah, Because they exactly. want to be passed through. Exactly. You do not want to have to pay that double tax taxation. So I tell clients that all the time. I have a, a really good friend of mine who makes about somewhere between 4 and $6 million a year, and she's still getting paid as an individual. Really? Still That's getting paid. That's absolutely insane. Insane. But she's just, every week, she's like, you know what? You're right. I'm going to figured out. I'm like, you have lost so much, but she's making so much. She doesn't have time to stop. I'm like, what is she's like, my accountant does not help me at all. Actually, I might need to refer her to you. She's like, she could set herself up as a C corporation and be paying a tax max 21% tax. That's right. Pay yourself a salary, a decent salary and the rest of it's tax. That's the new Trump rules, right? The yeah. New yeah. Trump, yeah. That C, the C was better. It's now better than the S is it not? It is. He changed all my S corps back to a C corp. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you, the max rate is 21%. The max personal rate is 37%. <laughs> do the magic. I mean, do the numbers. I'm getting stressed out listening to I you. I mean, it's insane. It is. Yeah, and this is good through 2025. But they need their business managers like you. They need somebody to track the money if they're not going right. to do it. You know, you, if you're not going to be somebody that's going to make sure that you get all your money, then it's going to be a problem. You know, and a lot of times I just add it all up and... I'll get to the end of the season. And I'll be like, look, you should have gotten a gross amount of this amount paid out. And we come and it's, let's say it's supposed to be 148,000 and you got 138. I send wow. them a bill. I send the production of 10. Well, what is this for? I don't know. And that's not my job. My job is that is to tell you guys that you missed 10 grand somewhere and you can reflect, you can go back and look at the contract. And you know what? They process the Oh, Mark, we processed your payment. Mm. It's going through, you know, because mm -hmm. they know that I am not going. So you to deal with these payment. networks a lot. Networks and the production companies, because mm. remember, the network's first line of defense, and they will tell you that is production is the production company. Yeah. So when I come for the networks, like I did with yours, yeah, they immediately want to punt me over to the. Oh, okay. Well. I'm so sorry you had that problem. Let me get you in contact with the head legal over at the production company. You deal with them, and then if you need us, let us know. And they damn sure did that, too. Oh, they every single one does it. But I just, I do it more as a strategy, you know, to yeah. let them know. Because most, if you're not really in this business, and you don't really, even know who the lawyers are at the network. And I know really, them. They know me. Yeah. So I want them to know, oh, it's coming. Let's say that you can pump me over to production all you want. It's coming. I'm coming back for your I'm sorry. No, I am no it's back. all good. It's I am all good. coming good. back for you. Because they really thought they was going to run off and steal my project, Dan, without me yeah. having no type of recourse to be even put a wedge and cease and desist out there on them. That's right. Hmm. And then they claimed to correct it, and they still didn't correct it. Yeah. And then they corrected it, but they didn't correct it correctly. You remember that? This is, How they played it's a games follow -up, with it. And then it's a follow-up to the follow-up, and then it's two follow-ups for the follow-up. I mean, it hmm. literally... You, you have to stay on them, you know, to do the right thing, to make sure that. And she got me my credit for it. Mm. Mm -hmm. You sick. got you deserved it. It was your project, yeah. you know, so you got to really just be on your P's and Q's. It would be lovely if we lived in this amazing ut well, this is utopia where everybody in entertainment would just respect your creative oh, yeah. process. Not be cutthroat. Being in cre not be cutthroat. That is, the one, that is one of the most cutthroat games that I ever have. I mean, that I'm playing in right now. Unapologetic. Yeah, the Unapologetic. Must cutthroat. It's been that way since the beginning of time with entertainment. And it's almost as I tell people who take it personally, like in the beginning, you 
you kind of would take it personal. And I'm like, listen, no. for every single client I have that's in entertainment, everyone around them at one point or another, most of the people have tried to get over on them. And if you let it happen, it will happen because it is common practice. You know, yeah, I'm telling you I'll pay you the back end on this song, but you never get it. And you just follow up and you follow up. Well, they signed, Omar, we have a signed contract. Yes, we do. So they basically call your bluff. Are you going to sue me for your remaining balance? And if it's something small, 10, 20 grand, you're going to spend more in litigation. Mm -hmm. So they'll tie you up that way. They tie you up. So then they come and try to get me to settle. And the most, of the, most of the time, I can get them to settle, but it's based on relationships because they don't want me yeah. to muddy their name with all the people that they know I know, mm. which is how and this I'm is getting, a small And this is a small industry. It is the teeny weeniest little industry. It is mm. very teeny weeny. So everybody you see on the way up, you see on the way down. Mm. So, you know, you can kick them and kick a gift horse in the mouth if you want. But a lot of times you see those same people again and they remember. I mean, I have people who have been terrible to my clients, and they come back around and say, hey, we're looking to sign another client. There's, there's no way you're signing another client mm. of mine because I'm going to make sure they understand all the things that you did in your last oh, yeah. deal to sabotage my other client, mm. you know? So it's I, very important to have these contracts in play and have yourself a nice entertainment, well, a kick entertainment lawyer that can deal with these individuals and deal with your paperwork and the verbiage and whatever needs to be in these contracts to your favor to protect you from the stick up because they're going to try to stick you up. Yeah, and we, you know, we all know each other pretty much. Like, I just came back from Beesla, the Black Entertainment and Sports mm -hmm. Lawyers Conference in Mexico. Mexico, yeah. Yeah, everyone is there. You know, I don't care what you can, any single person you can. I told the interns that came, I said, any person you would ever want a job with in entertainment in the world is in this room. I don't care. It doesn't matter what company. They are all here mm -hmm. because every major, I mean, from technology and entertainment, from TikTok to Snapchat to Viacom to BET to VH1, they are all here. Mm -hmm. They are all here. And you can get connected with any of them. So, you know, everyone goes there because we all know each other and we can have a drink, sit on the beach, do all of these things, and we can kind of chit-chat through some things. Bouncing off each other. That are more contentious mm -hmm. on email. Mm -hmm. Or you can say, oh, you know this person? Oh, you know what? I have a whole problem with somebody in that office. Can you help me navigate that? And we help one another, you know? Mm -hmm. Even when we're on opposite sides of the spectrum. I saw somebody there that is suing my client, and she's like, uh, I hate you guys. I'm like, I am on the transactional side. Amara, this has been a great episode, and it's very informative to our black and brown community on the School of Financial Literacy podcast. Let's put these handles out here again so individuals can get in contact with you to retain these entertainment services that they're going to need. Amen. Well, my Instagram is at film and A-N-D TV Law at Film and TV Law. My Facebook is my name, Omara, O-M-A-R-A, dash Harris, H-A-R-R-I-S. And you can just look up my legal name on LinkedIn. You guys, hit me up. With that, we're going to pick Ace a wrap. The School of Financial Literacy Podcast. Pleasure having you on here, Omar. Thank you so much for having me.